As a graduate student, I had studied statistical physics and basically problems in equilibrium phenomena. Uh, but as I started thinking about my postdoctoral experience, I realized that I was very interested uh, in problems of motion and evolution in time and pattern formation. And so at that point, I, I segued over to the areas of nonlinear dynamics and pattern formation and a little bit of fluid mechanics. But it wasn't until some years later, when I was actually a tenured professor, that I thought uh, I should really include not only theoretical work, but experimental work in my research. And that's when I started converting myself to doing experiments as well. Well, initially I was drawn to fluid mechanics problems because I was very interested in the geometry of motion. And it's natural to think about evolving interfaces and surfaces and things like that that come up frequently in fluid mechanics. But over the years, my interests have moved much more toward biology. And now my motivation, while it's still very geometrical and very uh, mechanical uh, in the sense of uh, uh, science of mechanics, it's also about questions in evolutionary biology and the role that fluid mechanics plays in those kinds of problems. So I'm, I'm often looking more toward what is the interesting biological question, and then is it possible that fluid mechanics techniques can help us answer it. Well, over the last decade, we have focused on a couple of key problems in biological fluid mechanics, having to do with fluid circulation inside of cells and around cells and the uh, mechanical origin of those motions, whether it's beating flagella or moving molecular motors. Uh, now we're looking on a bit larger scale, uh, still to problems in evolutionary biology, but also developmental biology, where the whole issue of morphogenesis uh, comes out in a very clear way. And some of these are problems in fluid mechanics, and some of them, sorry to say, are not. Uh, but that's just the nature of science. And in a sense, I don't necessarily define what I do as I am a fluid mechanic and I look for problems like that. It's more like I am a, a biological physicist, and I often find that fluid mechanics is showing up in the problems that we're interested in. And, and I see that again on the much larger scale uh, in development and physiology. Well, that's a very hard question uh, to answer because we've worked on a, a number of different problems in biological fluid dynamics. But one in particular comes to mind that was an accidental discovery of what we term a hydrodynamic bound state between two swimming spherical algae. This was not something that we set out to discover. It was really accidental. We had been studying the collective dynamics of large numbers of bacteria in a fluid and had found all sorts of interesting large-scale phenomena. But we wondered what would happen if the organisms of interest were not small bacteria, but much larger and spherical organisms. And we've been studying this particular one called Volvox for a long time. We said, let's just put them in a box and see. And to our great surprise, uh, we found this collective behavior, even of pairs, in which they would orbit each other in a waltzing manner. That was the best word we could come up with. And it turned out that the mechanism that drives this, having to do with their proximity to a wall and an attractive interaction induced purely by the fluid flow around them, was something that had been predicted in a beautiful paper by Todd Squires uh, some years before. And I knew of this paper, and I suddenly thought, ah, this is probably what's going on here. But in order to translate it into our system, we had to make some assumptions. We had to apparently neglect certain things, assume other things dominated. And it wasn't at all obvious that this was true. But after a fashion, we discovered that it was, and we were able to have a perfectly quantitative description of this system. But in the process of realizing what was important and what wasn't, we ended up with a whole new line of research about trying to map out the flow fields around individual organisms and test theories of how those flow fields are related to the flagellar action on the individual organisms. And so it was an accidental discovery that just launched us in a really interesting new direction. I'm always a little bit reluctant to give advice on such epic questions, but I think that it's important to realize that fluid mechanics sits as one branch of science in a very much larger collective branch of science spanning from physics to biology to chemistry. And therefore, taking motivation from these other fields is often the best way to discover new phenomena within fluid mechanics. And I think, I think that's been the most important lesson for me, that we've looked at organisms that figured out how to make interesting flows 500 million years ago. And it turns out they basically figured out some problems which people studying microfluidics only recently figured out. And so the lessons that we can learn from biology, I think, are 
the most important ones if we're going to push the field into the really interesting new directions. Hmm. I would have to say water, because where would life be without it? <laughs>